Hey guys, Joe here. Uh, so I just wanted to do an update just because it's been a little bit in case you actually care. Uh, most people probably do not, but I like to do these so I can kind of look back and see what the hell happened too. Uh, so today is August 24th. Yeah, 2023. So um, typically this time of year is really slow for, um, you know, fence companies and um, just most companies in general uh, in this area anyway, just because you have the um, like um, the last minute uh, vacations, you have people school shopping, you know, taking kids to college and like all that kind of stuff. And so it's normally slow for August and then the first and second week of September and then it starts picking up again because people are kind of like more or less back to real life, right? And that's what we've seen at my own, um, my fence company that we used to have. And um, and we were just talking to some of the, uh, like as the deliveries are coming in, talking to the drivers like, hey, like you guys have been able to get here, you know, a lot this, you know, the last few weeks, you know, is, you know, the, uh, did you get more trucks or whatever? And they're like, no, nah, you know, we're starting to slow down and that kind of thing. Uh, but what we're seeing is our, uh, our sales are actually pretty steady, if not going up slightly, which is a really good sign um, just because everyone's slow, right? Um, this week alone, we've had it four contractors. Um, it was four contractors first order so far this week. Um, I don't know. I don't think there was any today. Um, today's Thursday. So there might be, you know, another one tomorrow possibly. Um, but four contractors, new ones in a week is pretty damn awesome. Um, don't mind my black hands. Um, and the reason, um, oh, not the reason, but like what I started realizing yesterday is I'm like, hey, I haven't seen, um, you know, I haven't seen this one guy, I haven't seen this guy. And I know our office had reached out and um, because we're not your typical supplier. So it's like, you know, Maria always like start texting me, like, yo, you cheated on me, where you been at? Like, who you seeing on the side? You know, do I have to fight someone? You know, that kind of thing. And um, they're just really slow. Uh, the one guy that was probably putting in, you know, three, four jobs a week. Um, at this point, he's subbing for other companies because he just doesn't have any work. Uh, so again, like the fact that we're still on, you know, a level or an uptrend um, in this down market, the downtime of year and everything else, it, it's just awesome. Um, we had a meeting, we're trying to get back to our weekly meetings. Um, if you haven't seen any videos about that, um, we were following the, um, um, oh my God, the um, EIS. So it's Entrepreneur, oh, EOS, sorry. Entrepreneur Operating System. Um, the book is great. And um, basically it's just a system to run, you know, kind of put like systems into place, things like that. Um, but one of the things is doing uh, weekly meetings, talking about, you know, what needs to happen um, or, you know, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing and watch videos about that. Um, but what we were starting to see is there was, um, you know, about a month ago was, you know, it was starting really slow down and I was like, oh my God, I don't know what's gonna happen. And you could just see that like, um, there was a little, um, I wouldn't say disgruntled, I guess disgruntled, um, you know, people, uh, you know, employees that we had. And, you know, part of the reason was because there was a lack of communication um, where like when we don't do these meetings on a weekly basis, when I'm not meeting with, you know, my team on a, you know, a regular basis, there's always issues. And we've seen it firsthand with um, my other fence company, or, you know, my old fence company. And uh, so we're working to get that back on track. And um, so basically what we do at the meeting, we kind of talk about like um, good news. So everyone goes around talking about good news and go from there and talk about like a scorecard and like what our goals are and things like that. And honestly, I, and I told him like, look, you know, I haven't I'm been doing a shitty job. Um, I haven't really focused on that kind of thing. Um, but then we started looking at like what we need to focus on for, you know, um, the next week. Right. And basically one thing for the production team, one thing for the, uh, front counter team. Um, because if you pick more than one, typically it's just not going to get done. Whereas if you just pick one thing, like it's just going to get done. Um, typically anyway, uh, things will obviously come up in here and there, but for the most part it gets done. Um, 
Uh, so we had a good conversation with that. You, you can see the immediate difference. Um, everyone's really working well together. Um, people that were kind of dragging their heels um, from, you know, here and there, not dragging our heels, but you could just tell, tell they weren't giving like 110%, like, you know, they were kind of giving like 70, 80, which is still good uh, compared to like what you normally get at most companies. Um, but after doing the meetings, um, it's been a big difference. So if you're not doing weekly meetings, I would highly suggest it. Um, it kind of coincides with Atomic Habits. So if you ever read that book, uh, the, the core principle on this whole thing is, uh, or the one really key takeaway for the, that book is, you know, 1% better. Um, if you're just 1% better every day for a year, it's not 365% better, like three times better, it's 37 times better, right? So it's 10 times more than what you even think. Um, just on these slight improvements but also the reverse is true if you are going you know one percent worse every day right so that's where it's important to you know do these weekly meetings and you know stuff like that it does take a while um you know you know uh it was probably like 45 minutes then we had customers coming in um it's also tying up um we had 11 people you know myself my wife and then our nine uh the you know the nine other team members uh so but it's worth it, in my opinion. Um, now, in the book, they basically have it where, and we'll do this as we keep growing, but they talk about having this more with, like, department heads, right? And then they go and filter out the information just because you can't do, like, a 100-person meeting, you know, when we get to that level, right? Um, so there's that. Um, it's been blatantly obvious that I keep on looking at, like, what's going to happen for next year. And realistically, we're probably... I would think we're probably gonna three to four X our business um, next year. Um, so at this point this year, we're probably gonna do between four and 4.5-ish, somewhere around there, I would think. Uh, maybe five, depending on what happens. And I really do think next year we'll, I, it's gonna be a minimum of double, but it's probably three or four X the business, um, which is pretty damn insane when I start thinking about those numbers. And then what's uh, just really clear is like that where we're at is just not gonna work long-term. Um, so we're, I keep on looking every single week to see like what's popping up and things like that. I'm not in position to buy any property yet, but it will be, um, sooner rather than later um so we're trying to find something that has a few acres so we can deal with that um what else i also did reach out to my former manager um i or supervisor i talked to her um probably about uh, february january february and brought her in and i thought like the her situation was different than what it was and then at that point in time i couldn't afford her um but basically i reached out today and said, hey, how you doing? Um, and basically just seeing if she's still interested and she is, which is really, really good news. Um, because when you're talking about, you know, double, you know, two, three, four Xing the business when we've already, um, we really don't have anything to compare it to um, just because last year we've really, we really didn't get going till I would say July. Um, so we just basically hit a full year at this point. Um, so I, I don't know what to expect. Um, but when we start looking at two, three, four Xing the business, um, there's gotta be, there's basically, there's two types of leaders, right? You have a visionary and you have um, operators. So visionary is someone that's looking more at the, the high level uh, stuff, you know, looking from like a 30,000 foot view. Uh, looking at, you know, setting the tone of the business, where, you know, the direction of the business, where we're going, um, you know, the, the big picture items, right? And right now we don't have a production manager. We have my wife in front counter. So we have a manager on front that's handling that. Um, does an awesome job, like insanely good, like actually the best job. Um, you know, between her, um, you know, my wife Maria, and then you have uh, May and Ashley, like, I don't care. You can put us like, up against any supplier out there. It's just not, um, we're just not normal um, in a good way, right? 
and I keep on telling everyone like whether I'm hiring someone or talking about the business or whatever it is it's basically like this is not a um, it's not a professional work environment it's a little dysfunctional um, it's not politically correct whatsoever um, so basically if you are a Karen if you are someone that gets your feelings hurt like this is not a place for you um, everyone's constantly breaking each other's balls um, we're having fun, we're laughing, we're enjoying what we're doing, we're working well as a team, and the customers see it, right? And um, it, it's just really nice to see. Um, but, you know, if you are in the New Jersey area, or if you're somewhere else and you're trying to relocate, I don't know why you would go to New Jersey, um, but we are looking for the best of the best. Um, but going back to the whole uh, production manager thing, is that um, as we go to scale our business, the one thing is we really need a production manager. We basically need another operator in the business, right? And for a few reasons. Um, one, I'm not an operator at all. Like, it's just not what I wanna do. It's not something I like doing. Um, I can try my hardest, but at the end of the day, it's just not, it's it's not me, right? And, um, cause you really need, you need a visionary within the company and then you also need operators within the company because if there's no visionary, there's really no direction, right? Um, you can have a manager and they can set the tone for like that day and for the week and the month and everything else. But like who is really actively looking at what are the plans for the next three, five, 10, 20 years, right? The manager's not looking at that, that stuff. They're looking at the problems that are happening today and next week and next month, right? Um, so, and I'm just not consistent. Like I know, I know me by now, right? And the one thing that I've tried and str that I strive to do every day now is I wanna be, or not I want to be I want to like we ran our fence company for seven years there was things that were in plain sight the whole time but I was kind of like not like I'm just blinded by it right because I'm too close into it but as we started the supply side it's like I'm talking to the contractors I'm like there's things that we just weren't doing there's some things like if I would have just hired this person like it would have made like I would have doubled my business like easily um so I'm determined not to do that again, right? So uh, that's why I reached out to my supervisor today um, because for the longest time for the production manager, I really wanted this one person that's working for this other company. Um, I'm not sure if he watches my videos or not, but I've left him alone at this point. But for the longest time, I swore I needed someone that's been in the fence industry and knows what the hell they're doing, um, you know, for the last, you know, been doing it for 10, 15, 20 years. But I don't think that's the case. I, I just don't. Um, not that he wouldn't be an absolute asset to the company um, because not only is he very, um, um, you can just tell like he's a good person and that's like number one on my list is like um, just having a good um, team around me. Oh my God, this whole shopping center is closed now. It's crazy. I don't know when this recession's coming, but it's gotta be coming. Um, but we, I forget where I left off just because it was crazy. Like every, there was four main stores. So you had Bed Bath & Beyond, you had Bye Bye Baby, you had um, Harmon Values. I never went there. Um, Christmas tree store, but all of them are closed. All like craziness. Um, so I don't know where I was going, but it's okay. I'm almost at the store anyway. Um, but anyway, like I need an operator, um, but reaching out to um, my old supervisor. Um, oh, the whole um, need a production manager and stuff like that. I don't think we do. Um, it might be me just not knowing any better. It could be. Um, but it's also like I don't even really do anything um, like I help out when needed. Like if they have questions, of course, I'm there. But for the most part, they just do it. Right. Um, so it's really just needing someone that's consistently um, seeing what's going on, how to improve operations, going through the inventories and stuff like that. And I, I feel like that's all we need at this point. Um, the other reason for it is um, this, you know, my uh, supervisor, um, you know, she comes, I don't even want to say where she comes from. Um, but like she could run this business blindfolded, like, um, 
like it's crazy um you know the amount of stress and everything else that she goes through the amount of shit that she has to deal with on a ba daily basis um it's just nowhere near that level um it's i don't know the more and more i look at this like it, it's easy um but like scaling is on another level so um but that's where we're kind of at at this point um and also so going back sorry um you know, like I told my uh, my team, it's like we, you know, when we're going on vacation, we can't just shut down the business. You know, with defense company, it was easy. With this, you really can't because you have so many companies relying on us. Um, so that's where we really need someone else in as well. So that way we can continue to run the business and not worrying about it, um, you know, when they uh, take over uh, or, you know, because they're able to run it. Um, that in, you know, the goal is to go to another, you know, we'll have several locations. Like I just know what's gonna happen. Um, and you know we need to have this team completely in place so that way we can start the next team um so that's where we're kind of at so a lot of exciting stuff um found a few more manufacturers um which is great as well um so that's where we're at I'm trying to think what else <sighs> just a lot of momentum like it's happening like i see it like i've spent the last like I calculated my hours for my um, my company, uh, like when I was running a defense company, but basically I invested about 25,000 hours into my business, 25,000, right? I was talking to the uh, new owner and I said, look, I, I feel like you are trying to be do what I was doing when I was working three to four hours a week, um, you know, thinking that, you know, you're thinking that you could easily just do that. But I'm like, I put 25,000 hour, hours into this business. He's like, there's no way. So I just did an average of like 70 hours per week um, to seven and for the seven years and it came out to like 25,000 something, right? So I put 25,000 hours into the business um, and at this point, like, it felt like we we're just beating our head against a wall constantly. Um, we were never gaining the momentum that we should have been. And it, it just wasn't the right fit for us. Right. Um, it just wasn't what we were meant to do. Um, I'm not saying this will be the last business that I run, but it's just, it's nice to finally see the momentum in a down economy, in a down time of year. Um, there's a lot of things going against us, um, dealing with, you know, in our area, there's like four main one, two, three. Yeah, there's like four in our immediate area. There's four other suppliers, um, and we're growing. Like it's nice to see. Um, I I know they can tell the difference um, between the down market and then us coming in, along as well. Like you know, there's a four million dollar hit that they're they're not going to see this year. Um, so and like as you keep on going up these ladders, you're you know basically as you. Um, it's kind of like a video game like after you get through each level like the boss gets harder and harder and harder um you know when we're going after you're dealing with other fence companies that's one thing but when you're dealing with other fence suppliers like that's just a totally different thing um so anyway that's where we're kind of at um if again if you care but really it's just for me documenting the process but there's a lot of good things happening i'm really proud of our team um it's it's been really it's been awesome like it's I, I see it like we're going to be able to finally get the income that I'm looking to get and then it's also we're able to help um, one I think we're really changing the dynamics of like what a supplier should be um, and then three is like really being able to take care of my team to give them everything that they want to need um, because like they're helping take care of this business so I want to make sure I take care of them uh, whereas with the fence company I really never got to that level um, so it's nice to see um, so that's where we're at so anyway um, I'm getting ready to cook a shit ton of meatballs and meatloaf because we do um, food every Friday for our contractors so um, and just a nice time for the crew to eat and everything else too so have a great day